much has been written about Churchill Falls, the Upper Churchill, the Lower Churchill, the Churchill Falls Power Agreement, that the wonder is really that the film record of events surrounding the mid-60s and the Churchill Falls Power Agreement isn't larger than it actually is. I'm in the CJON film archives here at NTV, and the single reel of film is virtually the full extent of the material that is available to describe one of the great events in the province's history, great in terms of its impact, not in terms of its popularity. The year was 1966, and an agreement was signed that was to change the face of this province forever. The rivers of Labrador, untapped wealth almost beyond dreams, the key to Newfoundland becoming a have province rather than a have not. In the mid 60s, we were so full of the pursuit of coin that we, through Brinko, became involved in a power contract that we were to regret for 40 years. The swirling waters of the Churchill River were to become a gold mine not for Newfoundland, but for Quebec. This film, produced in the 60s, shows the magnitude of the great imperial dream of Joe Smallwood and the de Rothschilds. But the film gives no hint as to the agreement entered into between Brinko and Hydro-Quebec. That agreement provided a customer for Labrador power, for Churchill Falls power, for 40 years and an additional 25 years through an option clause. The customer was Hydro-Quebec. And when that agreement was negotiated in the mid-60s, no one could have known that the world at large would change. Gasoline could be bought in Toronto at that time for about 50 cents an imperial gallon. Words like six-day war, the oil-producing nations, OPEC, an oil embargo had yet to be entered into the lexicon. Hydro-Quebec and Brinko signed an agreement that provided fair market value for Churchill Falls power in the 60s. But the contract was for 40 years and a 25-year extension. Churchill Falls power became almost infinitely more valuable as the price of oil skyrocketed and the Western world was virtually held hostage by OPEC. The contract is a contract, and the province of Quebec was to resell Churchill Falls power south to the oil-starved United States at a profit that would make your head spin. It is a contract that is in force today. How this province would have fared given a contract that could have been reopened at some point, we will never know. It is the stuff of which good arguments are made. But it was in October of 1966 that the cabinet of the province of Quebec approved the signing of the first 40-year agreement between Hydro-Quebec and Brinko. That and a further 25-year option at an even lower rate would see Newfoundland free to sell its own power again in the year 2040-something.